Hey, what's up, everybody? Championship Leadership Podcast. And today we have a special guest, Amy Tarek. She's from currently in Orlando, Florida, number one best selling author. Her book, A Life with Health. And uh, she's got, she's excited. She's got some, some more content, a few more books that she's launching out this year that she's really excited about, uh, as I just learned here uh, before we started the show. But thank you, Amy, so much for taking some time to be with us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> Absolutely. Me too. Um, I always like to ask this question first uh, to get things rolling. Um, the name of the podcast is Championship Leadership. So what does that mean to you or what do you hear when you hear uh, championship leadership? Like what does that mean to you when you hear that? For me, it's somebody who um, keeps overcoming obstacles. Whatever that's thrown in their way, they say, you know what, I have a vision. I'm going to stick to it and I'm going to overcome whatever comes my way to get to it. Yeah, I love that. That's <laughs> That's awesome. And I, I say this from time to time, but it's, it's so fun to hear the answers because, you know, I would think that I would just continue to hear like similar answers, but it's always different. So <laughs> I've been like 80. That's fun. <laughs> it's great to hear all the different uh, ways that people see or hear championship leadership. But for you, um, I, I want to hear like what are, usually, you know, if the answer you give is, is probably a little bit of a reflection of some things that have happened to you. What, what are some of the obstacles that have uh, come your way inside of your life and that you've been able to overcome to, to get you to where you are today. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your story. Okay, so that's an interesting point because yeah, I guess my, um, my most difficult obstacle was really my health. Um, mm -hmm. Whenever I was 18, I became extremely, extremely sick. Um, all of a sudden my heart rate, my resting heart rate was over 200 beats per minute. And I don't know if anybody listening knows um, a little bit about heart rate, but the average person is about 70 beats. Mm -hmm. So 200 is a lot. Um, I couldn't hold the conversation. I couldn't brush my own teeth, brush my own hair. I was completely disabled. Um, and it was tough for me because I came from an athletic background where I was a cheerleader, a dancer. Um, I skateboarded, I rock climbed, I did everything. Um, I mountain boarded, I bungee jumped, like I, everything physical, that's what I did. I'm a very kinetic person. So to be um, stuck inside of your own body that way all of a sudden was just really difficult. And with, you know, all of the doctors around me saying, well, that's just what happens to some people. Some people just randomly get sick and they're sick forever. And I thought, you know, if I'm gonna, I'm not dying, but I'm not living. And I can't, I can't live another 70 years trapped within my own body. Um, so I'm gonna have to figure something out. And you know, most doctors did not help me, but unfortunately, eventually I found some doctors who did. And um, working together, well, it, it took me a long time. It took me until after I was basically already healed myself to find doctors who would work for, with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> so I didn't do much. Um, but um, with myself, just um, really seeing what works for me and not necessarily listening to um, what people tell you that you should do, but just really um, having to go to a place within yourself where you really have to find to not listen to any of the outside voices or anything else, just knowing you, you like, I really had to go deep inside myself to see what was working for me, what was healing me and what was harming me. And I had to go really deep within myself to do that and to just get rid of all of the other surrounding voices and just to focus on that so that I could be whole again and be healthy again. Mm -hmm. So what, like how long of a process was that uh, for you? Um, uh, since I was 18 to about maybe age 24. So it was a long process. And, you know, in between then, you know, I was in a car accident that completely totaled the car and hit my side. So it, I had to restart from scratch. Um, my knees got absolutely destroyed. So <laughs> I had to like restart from scratch several times. But you know what? Um, I'm able to do everything I was able to do before. Wow. Um, so I'm happy that, you know, I, 
there were so many times when I could have just gave up and just quit on it. But um, especially since I had to start from scratch so many times because of life happens and car accidents happen and other things happen. But um, I'm, I, I am happy that I got going, even though everybody told me, you know, you're never going to get better. You're never going to get better. Like, I, I don't think I had really anybody believe in me. Um, but, you know, the human body is just so capable of so many things. And, you know, you hear stories of people who've gone through so much worse than I did and who completely healed. So, you know, there's, there had to be a way for me. And fortunately I found it. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk a little bit more about like, yeah, what was going on? I know you said that you had some things going going on with you and you kind of were able to figure that out on your own, but I'm always interested in like, yeah, how do you figure that process out on your own? I've had many <laughs> of us now that have had similar things health-wise in their life go on and no one knew the answers. Uh, there's Aaron Gendel, he lives in Florida. Uh, Rachel Shear lives in Texas and, and uh, they've both been guests and they both kind of have this similar story and how they really kind of figured it out on them on their own and kind of like the similar path of like just really getting back to the basics just checking on their health looking into their nutrition and and uh so I'm interested to hear like what was it for you and how were you able to find that path what was going on for you what did you eventually find out you know what was really happening sure so um I had so many different diagnoses um the I had like tachycardia, POTS was just, it's, um, it was just a new disease that they discovered. And, you know, um, so that now it's more widely known, but at the time it was brand new and, you know, incurable. Nobody can cure from this. They still say that they still put people on lifelong medications. I cured mine, um, whatever, but, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> But, but they still, there's so many things I was diagnosed with that they're like, well, you're stuck with it forever. And I was like, absolutely not. Um, I just feel like, um, so I, I feel like once I had that mentality of, you know, lifelong medication isn't really for me because number one, like I'm not responsible enough to take medications at a certain time every day <laughs> just not <laughs> number two I'm sure people can relate to that yeah, totally. number two um you know just the side effects it's just like what's worse having the disease or having the side effects i don't know and so the side effects are absolutely horrendous and it's like it's not really better um plus with the side effects of a lot of those medications like you're not going to live as long regardless Plus, you're still miserable, so why do it was my kind of thing. Yeah. People have different thoughts, of course, but um, it wasn't helping me. It was harming me. And, uh, um, and so I just felt like I had no other choice but to find another way. And so um, I just began with the basics, going back to basics, um, completely detoxifying, um, making sure there were no chemicals or harmful chemicals around me, um, making sure that um, yeah, I just, I'm, I went completely, people would say overboard, but obviously it wasn't overboard because it worked. So I, um, I turned everything organic. I completely detoxified and that was a big kickstart into, um, my body being able to regulate itself again. And, you know, there's a lot of people who say, you know, that, that was too much that, you know, it was going overboard, but you know, it healed me. So it wasn't. Um, they would actually say that to you though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and so, um, yeah. Um, and then after that, I was able to go into more specifics and then finding doctors that would actually do the scientific work. Cause there's a difference between a doctor and a scientist. Sometimes you get both. Sometimes you get neither, <laughs> but, but it's, it's difficult to find one. So um, finding doctors that will do the science work of getting the lab test that I needed. Now, I'm, I'm very scientific. I was going to go into pre-med. I love science. So I have a scientific mind. I'm able to understand all of these things. Um, and it's interesting that there's just a lot of doctors who don't have a science mind. So whenever you're looking for answers, you really need to find one who understands science fundamentally um, and uh, um, understanding that you know 
everything has a cause and effect. It's so simple, but some people just, whoop. and so um, finding doctors that really understand that and then getting those tests done, because if you're not getting tests done, you're just working on, like, what are you working on? You're just, it's on emotions, it's on feelings, it's on, I think, I think, well, how about you work on stuff you know? And so um, getting real tests done and seeing the real results and seeing what's actually working is a big thing. And it's expensive, unfortunately. So not a lot of people can actually have access to that. And not only is it expensive, but um, finding doctors who actually have the knowledge of interpreting those tests is difficult because a lot of doctors don't want to take that risk to interpret those tests. Um, so it's, it's a really difficult process. Um, I have um, some courses laid out where I, you know, I, I say, you know, how to find the right doctors, but there's no perfect way on how to find the right doctor for you because it, it really is difficult and I feel for people. I went, I spent so much money before I found the right doctors for me and they just ended up being my neighbors and they ended up being perfect. So it was completely random. I say, you, you know, the universe had it meant for it to be, but it's difficult, but um, that's how I did it. Okay. And so, yeah, I mean, was this like, was there anyone along your side or like helping you through this journey or? Um, yeah, I had, um, my husband supported me financially a lot throughout this time. Um, that was his biggest support, which makes a huge difference because unfortunately with how the health system is, if you know, you don't have money, nobody's going to help you. Yeah. So, um, that was the biggest thing. Um, I wish I could say emotional was the biggest thing, but no, <laughs> uh -huh. honestly, that's the biggest thing. And I feel awful about it, but that's how the system is, but that's how the system is. Yeah. And um, sometimes to get answers, you really do have to put the money in and yeah. it's heartbreaking, but it's how it is. So, so talk, talk a little bit about, so you, you go through this journey and you kind of figure things out, you go back to the basics. I mean, is that just something that you would, I feel like it's something that you would kind of natural if you, if you're experiencing some health issues like you were and you don't really have a lot of answers. It's just kind of the common sense would be to go right. to the, the basics, right? But I think there's a lot of people that don't. They will just take the prescriptions and you know the side effect. Like they just, they just kind of they don't question. And and so it's it's very unique when you run into someone like yourself. Although it makes total sense that there are a lot of people that will just listen to the quote unquote experts. And and just like you said, you know, sometimes you run into a doctor that's not a, you know that's a doctor and a scientist, and sometimes they're neither. Right? Even though they have the title. I mean, it's just. It's, it's real world stuff that you're talking about. So how did you go from that to like, is there a mission that has come out of this for you to help others? Absolutely. Um, so, oh, and yes, um, I want to go right back to the doctors too. And yeah. what's, what's heartbreaking is that, you know, the doctors that do tell people, you know, you have to go back to the pay basics. Um, a lot of people don't react well to that. They get angry. What do you mean there's not a medication I can just yeah. take and fix everything? So like those doctors lose too. <laughs> so it's just yeah, right. so unfortunate. <laughs> the whole thing is just very unfortunate. They lose no matter what. But yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah so I, I do. I, I, I wanted to help so many people. Um, so I put my courses out. I put, you know, my books out. I, um, I was, I spent a lot of time helping people through this journey. And then I took a break for a little bit to work on other projects. And now I'm delving right back into it. Um, there's, there's so much that I want to do to, you know, hopefully try to improve this system that we're in, but also bring awareness um, to people who are ill that, you know, there is other ways to go about it, but also um, bring awareness to people who aren't ill that, you know, maybe we shouldn't shame people who are sick or who are going through this because it's not entirely their fault that they're sick. Um, most people, it isn't their fault. So there's a big, um, there's a lot of shame, especially in the entrepreneur community or the business or professional community when somebody gets sick, like, oh, they manifested it, they attracted it. Like that's not how any of that works. 
Um, it's just not. And so um, just, there's just a lot of um, wrong ideas out there that really, they, it criminalizes people who are sick. It, it says, you know, they had a moral failing that they brought this onto themselves. And so I like to dispel those myths as much as I can as well. Yeah, I got it. So you obviously um, have a talent for writing. You, you have a number one, but you're a number one best-selling author. Uh, again, we talked about the book, A Life uh, with Health, and you got more books coming out. And so um, it seems like you have a love for writing. And, um, you know, where did that come from? Has that always been something that, that you've enjoyed? Or is that something that you've discovered through this process? Um, absolutely, a bit of both. So when I was um, a little girl, I would uh, sneak my mother's typewriter and I would play on it and ruin everything and use all of her ink. <laughs> <laughs> and I would um, always be writing and pretend words because I didn't know how to spell. I was four. <laughs> I, would, I would be just be writing and writing and I would staple it all together and be like, look, I made a book. And so um, it's definitely something I always um, thought about doing. I didn't think that I would do it so young. Um, I wasn't really interested in doing it so young. I thought it'd be something I would do, you know, after I retire yeah. or, you know, something like that. Um, I never thought it would be something I would do, you know, in my early 20s. But, um, you know, with whenever you're, you can't get out of bed and you're so sick, you can write. So it was, um, it was therapeutic for me. It was healing for me. Um, I had to do so much research regardless. Um, and I had to communicate that research in a way for people to understand. So I was doing it regardless. And I thought, well, I might as well write books. Um, cause I'm doing this for myself regardless. So I did it mostly. Um, yeah, I did it because I just felt like, like something inside of me compelled me. Like you just, I had to do it. And mm -hmm. so that's what got me through it. And I was able, I, I was able to write so quickly and so many, so much, so quickly. And it was just like, like a compulsion. Like I just had to do it. So. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Who are, you know, talk about championship leadership. Who, who are some coaches, mentors, leaders that have impacted you maybe inside of this journey that you've been in, or maybe, you know, throughout your life and, you know, more importantly than who, but like really what is it about these individuals that like qualities characteristics traits that you've taken and really helped to help shape and mold the championship leader that you are um i really love the story of dr gladys dr gladys is the um pioneer of holistic medicine the one who invented the word holistic and the whole holistic movement and That's She's 98 years old now, and she was one of the first female doctors, and she had to overcome so many obstacles to become a doctor because it was at a time where they didn't want women to be doctors. And so um, just overcoming those obstacles and then again overcoming them whenever she created the whole holistic movement and opening people's eyes that, hey, you know, we don't have to prescribe medications all the time. We can actually heal people in all kinds of ways because healing comes you know in a million ways there's people who heal through yoga people who heal through dancing people who heal you know yeah. in crazy ways that you know people think is impossible but healing for each person comes in such a different way and just completely opening people's minds to that that it's not there's not just one set way to heal. Um, there were just so many obstacles she had to overcome and is still overcoming at her age at 98 years old. And so um, just seeing that she had a vision, a dream to create something since she was 20 years old and she's still working on creating that all of these years. And she hasn't had that thing yet, like just the perseverance and the discipline to keep going. is just absolutely amazing for me. Like I thought I had a hard time by like being sick for like five or six years. <laughs> and I had to have perseverance for that, which, you know, I did, but there's, there's people who have had to work 
literally their whole lives and still like just like she has working her whole life to reach this project that she's reaching and you know at 98 still working for it I think that's amazing that is amazing yeah thank you for sharing that and so do you do you personally know Dr. Gladys is that her name yes yes I do um she's actually I'm going to be writing a book with her as well soon so I absolutely love her that's amazing yeah and how did you come, uh, how did you cross paths with her? How did you get into her world? Um, it was just completely by chance. I was at an event in LA. Um, there were a lot of cool, famous people there. Um, <laughs> and then um, like I hear her speaking and I saw her there and I had some of my books of hers there and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it's her. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, she's like my hero and she's here. It's like, I, was, I just couldn't believe it. And I was just like obsessed with her. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and so, yeah. And, um, you know, what you do, you went up and introduced yourself or what? Absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we talked about so many concepts. I loved, um, all of the things that she talked about. She has like such a strong will and I, I absolutely love that about her. And so we talked about so many things and now I'm fortunate enough to be able to call her a good friend. So I'm yeah. so happy. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's great. Um, what's, what's your vision? I, I love to talk about this with, with guests, you know, championship leaders have great vision and they also have like the courage to really execute and to take action on it. So what's, what's, what's the vision for you? What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish in the space that you're in? You're writing a book with Dr. Gladys, like the person that created the <laughs> holistic movement. And so that's so incredible. So there's obviously, in my mind, I think, you know, it seems like there's a big vision. So I'd love for you to share that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've had um, a lot of visions come to fruition and I'm really excited about that. My next visions that are coming up would just be to um i'm in i'm in a place where like i accomplish everything i wanted to accomplish so fast so soon that i'm having to formulate new visions and um and that's what i'm working on just formulating new visions to work for in the future because like this is my dream to work with you know the um the doctor who created the holistic movement like yeah. that for me like that's my that's my peak so so like um it's just creating now it's like working forward like how can um I help her reach her visions of creating um living medicine and bringing it to everybody um because she always did nonprofits and she helped you know everybody whether they can afford it or not and it's just working on on being able to do that so that everybody can have access to health and healing. That would be a huge vision that, you know, take a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe not. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So the impact you want to make is to really uh, get this, this way of living and being out to the masses, I guess you'd say, right? Right. Right. Yeah. What's, um, what's, What's a, what's a, we all have critical moments, turning points in our life where, you know, had we not made the decision we did, we could be very, very easily could be in a much different place in your life. Like, is there a moment uh, that you can think back to um, that pops up like in your head right away um, that had you not made the decision that you did, um, you could be in a very different place today? Absolutely. Um... So when I was 18 and I was starting, um, I was getting sick and everything, um, I had full ride scholarships to any college I wanted to go to. Um, and I was there for a little bit. For, hmm? uh, for athletics or for? Um, no, because I was, um, yeah, I was, <laughs> I was also, I was smarter than I was. I was very athletic, but I was smarter than I was athletic. Yeah, and yeah. so she wanted to say hi real quick. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Amy's cat is, uh, if you're listening, Amy, <laughs> got introduced to Amy's cat. <laughs> so, and now she's gone. Um, so um, I had um, a lot of scholarships, not because I was athletic, but <laughs> I was pretty athletic, but not for that. But, yeah. um, and so I, I was in school for a while and I 
I um, dropped out. It wasn't for me. And um, it took a lot of courage for me to do that because um, I went to a, sorry, <laughs> I went oh, to yeah. a prep school and everything was all about college and not going to college means that you're a failure. And I just didn't see that in my point in my life. And I thought, you know, I'm here I am not dying, but not staying alive. I can't eat the college campus food because it's harming me. Yeah. Um, I had um, all of the professors there, they knew about my heart condition, but one who was in charge of like um, the class was how to use your planner. <laughs> the things they do to get people's money. Um, <laughs> my class was how to use your planner. And um, um, I had to skip it to go to my cardiologist appointment, which is a life or death situation. And she knew about it two months in advance. I told her a week in advance. I told her three days in advance. I told her the day before. Um, and after I missed it, so I could go to my cardiologist appointment, she sent me a message saying, I'm going to have to fail you if you miss class again. And I said, um, well, this is sort of illegal because you know that I have this disability. So, you know, but they do whatever they want, unless you're going to sue them, they're going to do what they want. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, it's like, so everything, everything was just terrible. It's like, okay, I can spend... Um, cause I, at the point I didn't know how long I was going to live either. I was like, okay, I can spend the next four of my years of life. That could be my last four years of life fighting for my rights in a stupid college that doesn't matter, especially if I'm going to die <laughs> yeah. fighting for my rights here, wasting all of my energy that could be spent healing and actually guaranteeing that I might have a future. I could waste my life fighting for these rights of, Hey, you can't fail me because I'm saving my life by going to a cardiologist appointment I can fight that or or I can just say enough with this I'm gonna heal myself screw you guys <laughs> I'm gonna do things my way or I can just do things according to the status uh, quo and do what society tells me to do and probably die so <laughs> I just decided to do things my way and you know it disappointed a lot of people people still tell me today that you know I'm a failure but <laughs> just for not having a college degree, I'm like, excuse me, I'm working with like the pop, top people in my industry. I don't think I would have called myself a failure. But, yeah. you know, um, I made that decision and I chose my life before having prestige or a degree. I thought my life was more important. And it's crazy to me that so many people think your people's lives aren't more important than that. Yeah. And it's it's a interesting American value system where, you know, people would rather die than not look good to other people. Yeah. And I think that's something that needs to change. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, it's, it's definitely something. <laughs> I'd rather be alive than to be cool, but you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. You made the right choice. Um, and it also, just, you know, be careful. Be careful who you take uh, advice and and listen to yes. things that you listen to, right? As well. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, what's uh? Yeah, and thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. <laughs> what would be one or two things that you could leave with the listeners that could really impact them, like today, that they they could take and implement and help them to move forward inside their life that you could share with them. Um, yeah, so not only doing things that are right for you mentally, physically, spiritually, what you need to do for yourself, but also respecting that not everybody's story or journey is going to look the same as you and um, people are going to do things differently and it's going to work for them because they're different people. So not trying to force everybody in a box or in a label because that's just limiting yourself as well. When you limit other people, you limit yourself. So um just to keep thinking and expansion. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah, thank you. Um, what are a few ways that the listeners can follow you, find out more about you, the books that you have, um, and what you, what you have going on? Right, so um, I'm on all social media sites, just my name, Amy Tarek, A-I-M-E-E-T-A-R-I-Q. Um, I'm gonna be revamping my Instagram, my Twitter, everything. So I'm excited about that. That's probably the best way to follow me. And um, where is your book located so that we can find out? Oh, yes. My book, A Life with Health, Health is on Amazon. And 
Yeah, you just type in A Life with Health by Amy Tarek and you'll find it right there on Amazon. Awesome. Yeah, we'll make sure that we link all of this up so that uh, if you're listening and you want to check it out, just click the link and be easy to access all of this. And thank you so much, Amy, for taking time today to be on the Championship Leadership Podcast. I really, really appreciate it. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much. I loved it.